nothing going on. Um, get the get it. You're not supposed to be doing that. And neither are you. You're not supposed to be participating. Sleep. <laughs> um. Yeah, so it's it's um it was it used to be common practice that everybody had to fast prior to any surgery for, for cats, but um it seems like a more the more recent school of thought is at least kittens, um it's better not to fast. Um but every vet has their own preference. Um I I it makes sense to me that um because I've seen how fluids what a huge difference the hydration level makes in a kitten. So it makes sense to me that um, it would be safer to operate on a kitten that was fully hydrated than one that hadn't had any fluids for 12 hours or eight hours or whatever it is. So we do fast the adults though um, after midnight. So when Sugar Plum goes in on Tuesday morning, she will have fasted um, after midnight it's easier for adults to do to do it and not have not get dehydrated and all that stuff. Um, Dr. F also does fluids, additional fluids and stuff so that they it helps them recover faster and they feel better and so that's good. That and plus the um, the uh, internal suturing she does for the girls helps so that when they, because obviously Praline is not just going to be a good girl and sleep like she's supposed to, but um, we won't have to worry about one of these little scamps wrestling with her and pulling out her sutures. So, so, um, and she seems like she's feeling good. She looks hydrated. They've both eaten, so um, everybody's doing well. Um, <laughs> I see you guys are talking about the links to Gator. So, yeah, so what happened, Lynx was one of the jungle kittens, the Lynx to Gator. And um, he was a huge scamp. And he, unbeknownst to any of us, was eating things. And when uh, we did his lung x-ray, because um, we uh, x-rayed all of their lungs prior to spaying neutering to make sure that um, they didn't have any evidence of lungworm uh, inflammation in there because that can cause serious problems under anesthesia. So they all got x-rayed and on his x-ray, we just happened to see something in his stomach and so we, he got out of his neuter for two weeks. And when he went back in two weeks later and got another x-ray, the thing in his stomach had not moved. So we knew that it, there was something stuck in his stomach. Um, it wasn't causing him any issues. He wasn't throwing up or having problem going to the bathroom or anything like that. But at some point, it could have caused a problem and it would not have passed or digested or anything like that. So it was important that um, we get it out one way or the other before adopting them out. Oh my goodness, it's milk bar time. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna put some truffle in there before those boys take it all over. Hey, Charles, do you want some milk bar with your mommy? What do you think? A little milk bar? No? Quite a little, quite a little meow. I mean, bring you to the water and see if you want some water, though. Um. So anyway, after his two weeks, and it was still in there, um, and we couldn't tell what it was because it turned out to be cloth. But um, Dr. Ferguson was like, "Well, you can't send him home with this in his stomach." And um, 
she was like the only way we can try to get it out with a scope or we can go in surgically and a lot of the times the scope isn't successful and it's expensive so she thought the best thing to do would be um, emergency surgery to have it removed which is pretty intense um, would have been a pretty big deal and so we were all trying to wrap our brains around that and then she was secretly hoping that when she gave him the pre-meds he might throw it up whatever it was and he did and there it was that beautiful black collar that he had eaten and what we were seeing was the the um it was actually a an elastic like a hair elastic that must have had some metal in it um that's what we had been seeing so Thank goodness we didn't have to do surgery on him. Hey, your mommy's in milk bar. Why are only the girl? I guess the girls have probably had bought the milk bar. You are looking a little, you're looking a little sunken though in your little, your little intestines. Truffy truffs. Hmm. She's obviously feeling fun though. Prail, if you're gonna lick, you know what's gonna happen. Hey, truffy truffs. Look. Come on, come on, Beth. Come on, Mr. Bull. Yeah, that's what she smells good. Yeah, there you go. Can I interest you in some wet food? Praline was apparently eating the wet food after her surgery. Truffle was not interested. Truffle's a kibble girl. Bart looks the same way. He's offended if we try to give him wet food, but wet food is better for them. Creature. Oh, she's so special. What a special truffle. So, after tomorrow, everyone will come back here. <clears throat> it will be the final, the final night with cupcakes. And um, we'll do tiny suitcases at some point. Uh... And then Saturday morning, we will all be going to LAPS. I'm assuming it will be around 1030. So we'll probably be leaving here around 10, 15. Um, I'm not sure actually when people are going to come by to get them. I think uh, Sprinkles people work until 1.30. <laughs> Hi. Oh, how special. Mm, how special. I know. What's that a little salmon now? Oh, she's so cute. Oh, so special. <laughs> Trophy Traps is quite the little lap kitten. She's shy, but she's Very sweet. You're not as shy. You're more scampy. Well, Truffle's pretty scampy, but she's a little shy. Okay, so who's going to be a good girl tonight? Are you going to be good? Are you going to be good tonight? I don't think you are. 
those boys miss their mama. <laughs> Yeah, it's always hard to for, for the um to say goodbye for the moms and the babies. It's always hard for me to see the moms and the babies go their separate ways. Hopefully she won't be too sad, but I'm sure she will n notice that they're gone, obviously. Um I actually got I emailed um I emailed <clears throat> Caper and Marigold's people, and I have a picture to post and a really adorable update. Um, Caper and Marigold were two orange kitties from Petunia's litter. I'll read you part of the email because it's adorable. Um, at night, they both sleep in our bed. Marigold is a fool for love and cuddles up with Lucy. Capers is reserved, preferring to sleep at the foot of the bed. Their personalities are completely different. I'm sure Capers promised his mom he would take care of his wild and crazy brother. Marigold now spreads himself out like a bear rug when he relaxes, front feet straight out forward and his back feet straight up, straight out to the rear. The pads on his back feet face upward. His tail shoots straight up. I've never seen a cat do this before. Perhaps it may be a hangover from some yoga you taught him when he was little. I gently lift his rear feet and play a game I call wheelbarrow. He likes that game. In the summer, Marigold likes to eat watermelon, while Caper's favorite treat is teriyaki beef jerky. They both love wrestling with each other and cuddle when sleeping during their afternoon naps. One of their favorite games is ping pong, played with a ping pong ball in the empty bathtub. They have their own rules, and I can't figure them out. Marigold has been jumping on my back when I'm in the kitchen. Lucy has to lift him off because if I straighten up, he digs his claws into my back. Uh, <laughs> P.S. Capers is a real cat burglar. Lucy's jewelry was beginning to disappear. We were mystified until I saw him take an earring in his mouth and hide it under a bed in one of the spare bedrooms. P.P.S. Capers and Marigold both send their love to their first mom and thank you for starting them off on the right track. Other cat parents in our neighborhood are green with envy. They are beautiful, healthy, happy, and relatively obedient. And then he says, PPPS, they have us well trained. <laughs> Isn't that adorable? So I'll post the picture too because it's really cute. They're so big. So they just turned one on the 18th, just like uh, Poppy and George and Sweet Pea and Aster. And I happened to see that Sweet Pea and Aster's mom and dad got engaged, which is very exciting. They're super sweet. So um, that's exciting news. Um, so they're all doing very well, the Petunia kittens. I haven't heard from um, Petunia's people. What are you doing, girls? No, no rough housing. Um... <clears throat> So, I'm going to try to go to bed early-ish so that I can get up early-ish, relatively speaking. Um, Sugar Plum will be on... The cam. Sometimes I'll probably do reruns and then sometimes I'll um, put her on. Um, I'm going to obviously have to clean and pack this room and the rest of the house. Um, and I will be letting her out more into the house so it will be hard to have her on the cam. Um, but I will, I will do some check-ins. Uh, I suspect that she's going to be great, um, and just, uh, maybe a little nervous, um, with the certain noises that kind of set her off. So, and it's also, it's good to know that she has the, that elbow injury because that could have, that could also be a trigger point for her. So. We will figure some of that stuff out, and then um, 
I may send her back to laps for a couple of days so that they can um, work with her too because uh, there are tons of volunteers and staff people and um, the more people that she interacts with, the better. And um, then hopefully we will get her into a wonderful home. Um, Quails, no lakesies. I don't want to have to cone you. It's looking really good, her inflation. I don't think it will be. I think licking it a little bit is fine. As long as it's not excessive. Um, when are we moving? That's a good question. Probably. Well, so we're selling this house, but it's not on the market yet because obviously you can't um, sell a house when there's an entire room filled with this thing. <laughs> um, and then our three cats out there, nobody would ever buy this house. So um, we are, so we, I need to get that cleaned out and fix like the carpet stuff and the, all of the places where the tape has peeled the drywall off, stuff like that. Um, so we have some work to do. And then, um, and then the, the place we were moving into flooded. So uh, they're fixing that now. So, but I think that should be fixed maybe in the next couple of weeks. So it'll be soon, probably in a couple of weeks. But, uh, we don't have a date for sure yet, because cause we don't. Hi, Mama. Come see me. Hi. Oh, those boys are just licking their lips. They had quite a milk bar, huh? Oh, good, Mama. So, Mama, day after tomorrow, you're going to have to say goodbye to your babies. So give them lots of hugs between now and then, okay? They're all gonna be safe and they're all gonna have wonderful lives and you can see them on Facebook. And you're gonna have a wonderful life too. She doesn't care, she just wants the food. <laughs> you want a little more? I'll give you a little more. <sighs> There, yes, there will be kittens in the new house. It will be a much less optimal setup, but we will make it work. All right, so I will see you all in the morning. And oh, oh my goodness, you should see the boys right now. <laughs> oh, it just it's like a Kid and mom went off, they're just kissing everywhere. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna move this back so you can watch it. So you can watch it. Oh, Kraus. Oh, Kraus. 
Oh, Ralph, that makes such a good pillow. Totally does. You can sleep on Praline's blanket. Don't tell Praline. <laughs> oh, man, there it just out. That's a good girl, Trust. Go to sleep. Have a little nap. Since it's our second to last night with kittens. All right. There you go, everybody. <clears throat> I'm so sleepy. All right, I'll see you all tomorrow. Good night, little scamp. Take it easy tonight. You too.